SPSS performs a range of non-parametric tests through one menu option, which we can demonstrate using this data set D1, which has 50 values randomly drawn from a population with a mean value of 7 and a standard deviation of 0 0.5. So taking analyze non-parametric tests, one sample for the D1 sample, we will choose to customize the analysis. We need to select the fields because there is only one data field in the data set. This has automatically been selected, but if it had not been selected, we would just select it and move it across to test fields. We will then customize the settings and we will choose the particular tests that we wish. And of the five tests that are possible, four of them can be performed on scale data. The possibility for using scale data is shown by this ruler symbol here. So starting with the binomial test, which will test for a specific proportion of values, we will be looking for a 50% split of values above and below a particular value, which in this case, for the purposes of demonstration, we will use a cut point of 7.2. OK. This does not allow us to do a chi-squared test on this scale data. So we will now test for distributions. And under options, we can see that we can compare the observed data set with four possible standard distributions. And we will compare it with a normal distribution. And we will use the sample data, which defines the parameters of the distribution that we're comparing it with. So, for example, it will test whether our sample data has a normal distribution compared to its own mean value and its own standard deviation. OK. We will then use the Wilcoxon test, which will compare the median of our sample data set with a set target value and for example we would just enter the value of 7.2 and finally the runs test will test whether the values appear to have been selected in a random order options and for this it tests whether the sample values above and below a particular value occur in a random order and we will use the test value in this case as being the sample median. So the runs test will test whether the values occur randomly above and below its own sample median value. OK, we now run the tests and we observe a summary of the results of each of the four tests. The runs test took the sample median of seven and then tested whether the values in the data set occurred randomly above and below that value. And with a p-value of 0.568, it showed there was no significant difference between the observed order and a random order. So we can accept that the data was randomly selected. For the binomial test, we entered a cut point of 7.2. So it tested whether the values above and below 7.2 occurred randomly or not. However, the true median value was 7. So we might have expected to see that the probabilities above and below 7.2 was not strictly 50%. Although the p-value of 0.066 is close to 0.05, it is just not a significant value. So the binomial test was not quite powerful enough to detect a true difference. In the Wilcoxon test, the true median of the population was 7, and we were comparing that with a test value of 7.2. So the p-value in this case is 0 0.020, and the test has detected a significant difference. So we reject the null hypothesis that the true median for the data set was 7.2. Finally, with the test for the normal distribution, 
the test measures the distribution of the D1 values as having a mean of 7.03 and a standard deviation of 0.49. So the kolmogorov smirnov test compares the observed values with a normal distribution with this mean and standard deviation and with a p-value of 0.967 finds no significant difference. So we could accept that the observed data set was in fact a normal distribution. This output here is only a summary of values and we can on each of these just double click to get additional data. So in this Wilcoxon test, it reports some additional information, giving the distribution of values, the total number, the test statistic, and the calculated p-value.